Assuming I get all of these clips in the right order, you just saw me sand off all that extra filler I put on there. And I think that was the right move. It really did make it look tighter. Um, yeah, you can still see it if you look real close, but I haven't dyed it yet again. And I'm not gonna do any more of the detail work on this until after I get the frets in it and get the binding on it. And then we'll do the final detail later after we get it attached to the neck. Cause I'm just doing do over work if I keep doing that. But you know, I was more or less testing techniques like you know putting that uh, red on there early on, you know, just to see how that would work if I put it in the lacquer. And it seemed like it worked pretty well. My wife liked the look of it. So if it passed her test, I guess it's okay. But anyway, it looks pretty darn fine now in my opinion. It's starting to look kind of professional again here. We need to put the frets in it. My buddy Ken, uh, he's been doing uh, a lot of work on uh, different uh, fret wire benders. And uh, you know, this is a homemade one that I made myself in my shop. Um, pretty fancy in a way, and then it's not too fancy in another way. I didn't put a crank on it. I didn't really feel like that I needed a crank, to be honest with you. It, it does have the, the slide is dovetailed in there so it can't fall out. It's kind of cool the way it works. And then I just milled the pattern on it just to make it look neat. <laughs> These are brass here, and this is steel here. Not that it really matters, it's just that I had that size steel and it was about the right size, so that's what I used. When I put frets, even in a flat fretboard like this, I like to, if I think of doing it, and I don't always, I'll admit, I don't always think of doing it. If I think of doing it, I, I like to run them through here, you know, just to put a little bit of a curl in it. It just makes them go in the fretboard a little bit better. You know, you don't have to have a real deep uh, bend in them or, you know, a radius in, in the fret wire. Just a little bit of a radius is all you really need. And that's probably all I really need right there. It's not much. I'll put a little bit more in it than that. It doesn't hurt it because it'll straighten out as you drive them into the fret slot. But that kind of keeps the ends down is what it really does. But if you don't do it, it's okay. You can get by without it. You know, I guess if I was being honest, I'd have to say mine at the ends doesn't bend it as, as real well either, but, but it's not too bad, and I don't really find a problem with that. I know Ken's been doing a lot of work on, those, on trying to find one that bends the ends. But uh, I really like this one here that I made. You know, one pass through there, and you got a nice radius on your uh, fret wire. And, you know, it's, it rolls so easy that you just push it right through, and it rolls it. Now, if you were doing real heavy wire, you might have a problem, but on the stuff I do, typically it's fine. Okay, so now we're gonna put the uh, frets in this deal. I showed that in another clip when I made the first fretboard. As you know, this is the second fretboard I'm making for this mandolin. So I'm not gonna show putting the fret wire in this one. This is my jig for guitar fretboards that I made. Copied it off of the one that Ken had made, but I, I didn't go to much detail or take a lot of pains with it. It's uh, just simply a bunch of plastic pushed together here, and uh, it's got a little wedge taper to it. I made myself a taper block to go in here to tighten this up. And I didn't allow for the thickness of the binding though, so it's really not going in there very well, unfortunately. So I'm gonna need to taper this or do a little bit more work to this to get the block to go in there better. I honestly don't remember how I glued the last one in. I assume I used this with the, fret, with the guitar fretboard, but uh, I'm gonna try that, this stuff with uh, with this one and uh, hopefully it won't stick to this kind of plastic. <laughs> That's what I'm worried about. I'm not worried about the binding sticking to the fretboard. I'm only worried about this glue sticking to this kind of plastic, which I don't think it will though because this, this kind of plastic's pretty, pretty slick and nothing really seems to affect it much. So here we go.
Well, I've got an idea here is to round this off, cram it in there like I just did, and then cram some more wedges in here to uh, take up the space. And then hold this down flat and jam that up in there. It's all jammed in place pretty darn good. The only thing I'm gonna do is put a little clamp down on this just to keep it down so it doesn't rise up on me. And I'll probably take that to another table and do that. Otherwise, I think that's gonna work real good. After routing that out, then it leaves a lot of places that you can't just get to with the full setup. So I just put in this spiral cutting bit, which I don't think you'll see it very well, but anyway, there it is. And I set it to the same depth, and then I just freehand all this stuff that has to be cut. I'm in here cutting this right now, and I thought I'd just show you, this is the most difficult part, I guess you'd say. So. What you need to do is decide how far do you want it to go. Well, I like it to go a long ways. So I'm just going to kind of freehand draw it in here and just kind of, you can always erase it. So there's no point in worrying about it. Just kind of just draw it in here and see where it goes. The black here will stay and all the pencil will go. I like them to go around, around further than the standard. A lot of the standard just comes so far, but I like it to look a little more artistic. So that looks pretty good. I think I can work with that. As long as I don't get outside of that pencil mark, I'll be in pretty good shape. I may have to put a smaller bit in here before I get to the final. a lot of stress on this spiral cutter because I'm, I'm trying to cut it to full depth in one pass and really it, it should be cut in multiple passes and you should go deeper each time. But you know, what the heck. I've got a lot of these spiral cutters. <laughs> Well, it comes a point where you are just fighting it, and I'm fighting it right now, so I'm going to put a smaller bit in, go a little less deep, and uh, then just have to keep deepening it up until I get down there. You won't find it on a well-traveled highway, not even on a dusty gravel road. Want to be there when you find it For it's not on any maps I know Out across the field, through the pasture Climb along the steep and rocky trail When you cross that little creek in the valley You'll see that vine-covered church on the hill That vine-covered church above the valley where the congregation gathered to pray Built with their hands from the forest Now stands as a marker for the grave steeple leans slightly to the right And though all the windows are shattered You can still hear them singing at night The brothers and sisters who worship Gather in that holy place still Though they lie head rest in the valley Beneath that vine-covered church on the hill that vine-covered church above the valley Where the congregation gathered to pray Built with their hands from the forest 
Now stands as a marker for the grain Now that we've got the holes drilled in the side of the fretboard, we're going to take some of our Beacon 527, available from Walmart. They're not a sponsor. <laughs> the, uh, this glue, what I like about this glue, especially plastic to plastic, is that it melts the plastic. And therefore, you know, it gives you a real good bond because it's not going to come out of there if it's melted to it. And then I just nip it off right at the edge. That leaves it sticking up a little bit, which you can come back after it's set for, I'd like to let this set for a while too, you know, not just a couple hours, but I'd really like to let it set overnight. The reason is that it, it dries hard then, and then it's easier to clean up. If you do it, try to clean it up early, it's soft and it'll smear around or not exactly smear but it just doesn't cut clean you know and um, so it's I just think it's there's no reason to hurry this so just let it set a little while and then you'll just have better results I'm just wiping off the excess glue because all it does is melt the fretboard plastic there so no point leaving it on there if you don't need to you don't need much of this at all just a little bit on the dot itself and I like to spin them as I put them in the hole to try to spread the glue out a little bit. I don't uh, cut these holes very deep, just a little deeper, just a little deeper than the binding itself is all you need. I usually go into the wood maybe, you know, 20, 30 thousand, something like that. It's, I don't have any particular way of knowing, i just not going in very deep. Okay, so while that's working out, now we'll work on this tail and scallop the tail out and get rid of these fret lines and things. And here's another, yet another place where you can just screw up everything. I mean, you could just trash the whole thing. So when I scallop this out, I want to be very careful that I don't, you know, get too deep or, you know, whatever. So I just want to be real, take cautious and take my time and, and do a real good job. That vine covered church above the valley, where the congregation gathered to pray. Built with their hands from the forest. I generally like to scallop them down to where the frets lines disappear. This fretboard was cut very thin, you can tell, and cut very deep. And if I take it all the way down, I think I risk causing a problem here on the edge. There's still enough white there now that looks halfway decent all the way around. I can clean that all up. I'm just going to fill it and dye it. Uh, I don't like it that way, but that's the way we're going to do it. It still stands as a marker for the grain. In the sunlight, that black horseshoe shine. It reminds me of our better time Back to a time our love was new When all my days were filled with dreams of you Lonely evenings that I spend at home Still keep your picture by my telephone Oh, what I'd give if that old phone would ring To hear your voice and all the joy it brings Well, now that I have the designs drawn in here, I'm going to use this tiny Dremel tool. And it is absolutely tiny. Yes, I have dental burrs and all kinds of things, but uh, to be honest, this Dremel bit is probably the best thing for me to use. It just works real well. Get it focused there. 
it is absolutely microscopic. You can't really even hardly see the cutter head without glasses. Anyway, I'm just going to very lightly score all those places and deepen them in and then we'll fill them and uh, that'll make it look like it was all cut out perfectly. Lovers now we're only friends I wish I loved you more back then As you leave, I hide the tears in my eyes. I'm always happy to see our children, but I wish I'd loved you more back then. And on the Sundays when I take the kids home, I see your shadow in the door alone. I try to fight it, but my lips say your name. My mind knows better, but my heart's to blame. Well, friends, if you run across anybody that says they never make a mistake, I wouldn't trust them any further than I could throw them. Yeah, I made a mistake on this mandolin. Not a big deal. It's not anything that's permanently bad or anything, but it's a big mistake in a sense that it's the order of operations. In other words, I should have done something in an earlier order than I'm gonna do it now, and that is put a truss rod in this. It would have been much, much, much easier to put the truss rod in while the neck was still square. You know, I guess I'm in my old habit, I never put truss rods in my early mandolins. Um, I've never had any problems with them either, by the way. I, I'm putting them in there mostly because it's the standard, it's the thing to do, but personally, with this laminated neck, I don't think it really needs a truss rod, but I'm gonna put one in there anyway. So, you know, how do you do that now? Because the neck's glued in, this is, the scroll's in the way, so like if you try to use a router, bang, it hits the scroll right here, so it doesn't work. So, here's my solution. <clears throat> I've made these two, if you wanna call them precision-made blocks, and they are pretty precision-made. They're exactly 375 thousandths thick, which is just thick enough to clear this here. So if I you know, put the router on here now and slide it around, it's not gonna bump the scroll. It'll go up and down, no problem. And that 375 thousandths, the only reason that's important is when I try to figure my depth, I can just add that 375 onto my depth. When I'm measuring down, I can measure to the top of this and I'll know how deep I am. So, you know, it's not that it's terribly important. It, it could have been almost any number as long as it's high enough to clear this. So good, now how do you get these effects? Well, I'm just going to attach them with some uh, CA glue. I'm gonna put like three dots, one at each end and one in the middle. I'll do one at a time here and get them precisely located. And I'm also gonna use them as a dual purpose. You know, the truss rod is, uh, well, I didn't measure it, but I think it's 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. It's 188 thousandths, I believe that's 3 sixteenths. <clears throat> anyway, um, I'm going to uh, use that as a, a width here too, so that it, the, it can guide my router on the width, and I'll know how wide to make the channel and keep the channel pretty straight because I'll use this inside edge as my guide. So, you know, 
in one way, it's a big hassle. In another way, this is fairly easy. It's not really very complicated or hard to do. Just a little more time consuming is really all it amounts to. Well, I believe we've got her all set up here. I uh, carefully positioned those blocks in there and I glued them in place. Uh, three little drops of glue. Yeah, it might be a little tricky to get that off of there, but it, it'll pop off with a... This stuff is also, I purposely chose a fairly soft wood. This is uh, our red, eastern red cedar that grown on the farm here, and it's fairly soft, so I can bust it right off of there if I need to, compared to the hard maple that it's glued to. And so you can see the truss rod fits down in there nice and easy. Um, I also marked, I'm going to keep this big long flat edge toward me, and I also marked that when I get down to here, th there's a pencil mark on this end that tells me where I need to stop, and then there's same way up here, there's a pencil mark here that will be exposed when I go past it there and uh, tell me where I need to stop. I've got it set at about a hundred thousandths deep, uh, so the first pass will take about a hundred thousandths and let's just see how it works. It's called El Comanchero. It goes like this. about ready to put the hole through here. Uh, the way I calculated that is I figured the depth of this first. You can slide this end of this down in the hole and this has a, a protrusion, sticks down in there, and you find that you just slide it down until it stops and that's the depth of your hole right there. So then I take this stick and I put a little notch in it here. Focus, there you go. And uh, anyway, the notch fits over the top of the peg, peg head there. Then you can slide this down until they match. And I drew a little pencil line across there. So that's the bottom of the hole if you extended it out perfectly straight. Now I'm gonna allow quite a bit from that. I'm gonna start up here because I don't really want the hole to go down past these, these uh, uh, first tuning keys anyway. So I'm gonna start about right here. And uh, I'll have to start it in a little bit straight, and then, then once I get a bite, then I'll be able to angle it and go this way. I, that's, at least that's my plan. Like I said, it would have been a lot easier to have done it in the proper order. The order of operations is very important, and I just screwed up, that's all. But as long as you know how to fix your screw-ups, everything should be good. I'm going to cut this out, go ahead and cut this out and it'll be easier drilling. truss rod has been made. I made this, just just made it, uh, just a little square piece of steel that I drilled a hole through and threaded. And I threaded it on here and then I, for security, I braze it on the end too. So it's not going anywhere. Then I shrunk it down to where it would fit a decent size slot here. 
and I've got that slot milled out there. But if you'll notice, this has a slight bend in it right about here, and it bends down. And so what I did was I made a fillet piece right here to go under that. So that will go in the slot under, focus, that will go in the slot under the um, truss rod. And then I'll put another fillet piece on top up here. And then of course it goes out to the threads on the other end. But anyway, I made that truss rod this morning. I've got the slot worked out where I believe everything's just about perfect. I'm going to put in this little fillet piece with just a little bit of glue. Don't need a whole lot. Before I put it in for the final time, I should make me a little filler piece for the top here that will kind of mimic this curve. Okay, we're back with a piece of to fill in on top of uh, this. It should go something like that and fill in right above the truss rod. That'll keep the truss rod nice and tight. This truss rod has an underbow in it, so when you pull it tight, it pulls, it straightens the truss rod. So anyway, let's put her together and see what we got. I'm gonna make another one. I don't, I'm not happy with that one. I thought I had it right, but it's not long enough. I don't know how I got it too short. Must have, mark, must have cut the wrong mark or something. That's okay, I can use this one for a pattern and just make another one. Stuff happens. As you can see, we've got the truss rod installed. I've made this filler strip. I've already applied a very thin amount of glue on the sides and the filler strip will fit right down in here uh, and mash down to the truss rod and keep the truss rod uh, tight. And so that, you know, when you, that way when you put any tension on this at all, it will uh, lift, it will lift in the middle. That should work great. I'm just gonna put a couple little clamps on that, let it set for about an hour, and we'll move on to the next step. May have to grind a little bit of the truss rod off. It's a little bit sticking out here. Would have been easier to do that before, of course, but I've got little grinders for my Dremel that I can get in there and cut enough of that off. So I don't think that'll be a big issue. We're at that final step of assembly. We're ready to put the fretboard on. And about the only two things that we have to do here is keep it, you know, we have to keep it aligned down the neck and we have to line up this 15th fret with the, uh, with this line across here. And then that leaves enough room for the nut up here. Now the only problem with doing this, it's, it's, should, it's just basically straightforward, but I have had such bad luck with this because it's such a flat plane and this is such a flat plane you put glue on there and you clamp it down and it will just somehow even overnight it will just slide sideways very light very slowly and it might just be off it might only be off a 30 second of an inch but a 30 second of an inch when you're trying to keep something perfectly straight is not cool especially when you don't have a lot to play with. So the way to fix that is you just take these little tiny brad nails, just a little tiny brad nail like that, and you just tap it into the neck a little ways. It doesn't have to go very deep. Then you just take your diagonals like this and you lay them flat on there and you cut them off. And it leaves a little tiny spike sticking up. Just, it's just a little tiny thing, but it's enough that nothing's gonna slide over that. You can tell that for sure. And then you put another one, I put another one on the opposite side back here in the heel of the neck. And like that. And then just cut it off. Then you lay your fretboard on here by eye, line it up by eye, the best way that you can get it lined up. And when you get it perfectly in line, you take your plastic hammer and you hit straight over this one and you hit straight over this one and that leaves a nice little indent in both of those. Then I just take it a little tiny drill of the same size there, more the smallest drill I have in this case. Well, actually, I have one smaller. Let me find it. This little drill is just about the same size as the nail. 
So that's what I'll use to drill these little holes. And they I just barely go in at all. I mean, like, just hardly go in at all. Just enough to make the little thing sit down in there. And then, with any luck, this should just find its way right back in those holes. And you should be good to go. Yep, right there. And I'm just pressing it down now to make sure that it looks like it's gonna go. Yep, it looks like it's gonna go fine. So now it, you can put your clamps on there and you don't have to worry about that moving. It's not going anywhere. And that's awesome. It's a little extra work, yeah, I know that. But man, I'll tell you what, it's worth that little bit of security there knowing that it is gonna be where you want it to be when you're done. Let's put this thing together. Well, I've got the glue spread around on there. Forgot to turn the camera on, but now we'll spread it with the brush. Get it nice and even. Okay, that's going to be fine. Now we got to find our little holes and get them lined up. There they are. That's the one thing about them. You can tell when you hit those because they go right in there. <clears throat> Keeping with my general theory, you can never have too many clamps. You can see I've got it clamped pretty well. So that should work fine. We're going to let that set for an hour or so and then we'll start smoothing it off. Thank you. 